know it's quite common and may Allah forgive us Allah help us but you know when, when a person generally who's quite gunagar they're far from deen they're quite humble because they know that they're sinful they're quite humble and they know they're, they're doing wrong and uh, may Allah guide us it, you know but when somebody sometimes becomes involved in deen their attitude changes really quickly in the beginning stages someone can become very harsh very quickly very intolerant very difficult to be around. They lose their sense of humor sometimes. Sometimes they become ultra sakhat. And it's as if everyone's going Jahannam, only you're going Jannah, that sort of mentality. It starts off like this because what, it, what happens is that the person perhaps lived the period of their life in ghafla. A person lived the period of their life away from Allah Ta'ala. So when they do come closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, what happens is they suddenly have this josh. But then what can translate in becoming very very unaccommodating and sometimes very difficult to be around. It's actually supposed to be the other way. Because when you come into Deen, when you start practicing Islam, the number one thing it should be is what? We don't look at others, we look within ourselves. Kichola, this brother, he does this guna, and that's what I can see. For example, someone drinks alcohol. We're not saying it's a good thing, it's a bad thing, it's a haram, guna kabira. Allah said don't drink, Nabi Sallallahu said don't drink, we don't do it. But khalas, end of story. But we see someone who drinks alcohol. And that's all I can see within that individual. It's possible he has one burai, one evil and 999 good things. Whereas in myself, I don't have that one thing, but I do tens and dozens of other things. I may consider myself better than people, taqabbur, which is a major, major sin. He might not consider that. So he's free from that thing, which I'm not free of. This looking down upon people with haqarat, looking down upon people, is a major sin within the deen. And it happens with all people, but it can creep in slightly more with those people who tend to be more practicing. We're a bit more prayari, they're going jahannam. All these are all bid'a and kafir, they're all like this and so on. We can, some people, some people, I'm talking, but this can generally creep in. Where people then start to become intolerant, people then start to become very sakhat, very harsh, and people then start to look up on others. The number one thing we as Muslims need to do is invite unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with wisdom and, and good counsel. And in good counsel, if you want someone to change a trait and a characteristic within themselves, you're not going to do it harshly. You're not going to do it by speaking down to people. Yeah, the fit of anger, we can say things that we regret. I've done it in the past a number of times. When you say something in the heat of anger, you shouldn't have done, you need to retract, go back. And sometimes even at an extent, we, even we may need to go and ask people for forgiveness and say, I'm sorry, but that wasn't called for. I asked for an apology. The thing is, is that our counsel, our nasiha, and our advice should be soft, should be naram, it should be befitting. When someone came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he asked Rasulullah "Give me ijazah to make zina." What did he sallallahu alaihi wasallam do? Did he call him a kafir? Did he say you're a naudu billah mushrik, you're a bidadi? Go from here, get out of my majlis, go to Abu Jahl, go and start doing shirk. He didn't answer anything like that. He addressed him in a soft, compassionate way, made him understand that if you're going to make zina with someone, it's going to be someone's, I'm just translating the hadith in my own words, someone's mother, sister, auntie, so on. And would you like someone to do that to you? You wouldn't. So then why do you want to do that to somebody else? So he tried to put that person in the, in the same position. And then that person understood that, hold on a second, this doesn't seem rationally right. And then Aab sallallahu alayhi wa made dua for him to clean his heart from this ill, this malady. And he said that after this time, I never looked at zina the same way. I hated it more than anything on the face of the earth. Because Aab sallallahu alayhi wa saw that there's a characteristic inside him. He's got many khubiyah, but there's this one khami. He, was, he had an inclination to something which was haram. He didn't do it. It was a thought, it was a jazba, it was a desire. So he sallallahu alayhi wa dealt with him in a compassionate way. He, sp he invited him with, with what? Bil hikmati wal mawa'adad al-hasana. With hikmah and wisdom and good counsel.